Scream, shout, whine, cry, snivel, piss, moan, whatever you need to do to sleep at night. Shove your opinion right up your ass. That way your head has something to keep it company. Don't forget, the ever-present, the most likely, the third possibility, you are wrong and I am right. This is Spreading the Obvious. I am the Great One Himself. I am here to let a smack down on the idiots, the idiots that surround me. How am I going to do that, you ask? <clears throat> I am going to launch the cruise missile of my intellect. <laughs> it will hold in. It's a stupidity-seeking missile. That's what it is. <laughs> and then... We wait on the outskirts of the rubble, and if any survivors go dashing out, then we mow them down, just like that, Randy and I. Randy is my tail gunner. <laughs> Alright, <clears throat> I am back. Throat's a little better, I hope. We'll see how this goes. And, uh, I have lots and lots of fun stuff. Let's take care of business. The email address, if you want to contact me here at Stating the Obvious, is God. G-O-D, God. God at 204eastsouth.com. I know that offends you religious people out there. I love that. I think it's great. <clears throat> the website for the Cynical Libertarian Society is 204eastsouth.com slash C-L-S. What else do I need to say, Randy? Uh, yes, this is Stating the Obvious, brought to you by the Cynical Libertarian Society. I am the Great One himself. Uh, this, this show is about my opinions, and my opinions are right. They are always right. I have always been right. I will always be right. And I do this by the very simple fact that I am never wrong. It's something only I can do, apparently, because other people seem to not know when to shut the fuck up when they're ahead. But it's okay. <clears throat> as long as I'm the only one out there who can do this... I'm okay with that. What else? Oh, yes, the theme song for Stating the Obvious is You Know I'm Right by David Gilmore off of his 1984 album About Face. I'm talking about David Gilmore. Be sure you check out his recently. Of course, when I say recently around here, that means within the last 10 years. His recently released DVD... Randy, I'm blanking out. What's the name? of the DVD. I can't remember the name of the DVD. This is pathetic. I have it. I have it back home somewhere. I'll find it. I'll remind me to remind people the name of the DVD they need to purchase. Or at least you can Netflix it too. Go to Netflix, search for David Gilmore, <clears throat> get the DVDs. There actually should be two of them available. Both of them are recommended. All right. Let me look at the stack here. The stack starts off with stupid people. <clears throat> There's lots of you stupid people out there. I'm debating if I want to save this one for the great racism debate, which is coming up in the near future. Oh, what the hell. I'm going to do it. This is a, <clears throat> a column, opinion column from the Collegian, CSU newspaper. Mary Ackerson, the senior political science major. There's your first clue that she is clueless. Your first clue that she is clueless, excuse me, is that she is a poli sci major. I can't think of if I'll. No, all right, never mind. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the poli sci department alone. I still I still have not done a sto. I still have not done an sto about my poli sci class and my under. See now I understand why I understand why you people are all so fucking stupid now. I do. Where, where are I have notes for what I need? To, all right, I must do the poli sci sto. Good God, I can't believe I haven't done that yet. All right, I have those notes somewhere. I'm scribbling notes to myself. I'm also working on some campaign materials, which hopefully will be available on the website soon. T-shirt stickers, stuff like that. Anyway, all right. <clears throat> A Mary writes. Widespread discrimination against Mexicans is not limited to those who are not citizens. People who treat Mexicans as though they don't deserve to be here are usually ignorant of their legal status. 
I have witnessed this phenomena in the restaurant where I work. Now, she is about to describe to you a personal, a personal witnessing. Is that a phrase, personal witnessing? Personal witnessing she had of racism in the restaurant. All right, listen to this. One man came in and jokingly, that's in quotation marks, jokingly, told our cook to make more fajitas in Spanish. Our cook is Mexican, but he was born in the U.S. and hardly speaks any Spanish. This may seem like a minor incident, but it clearly reveals the underlying stereotypes and prejudice which exist within the dominant white American population. Now, of course, Mary doesn't mention that she's white. It says her picture right here. She's also ugly. But on stating the obvious, we don't make fun of people for their appearance. We talk about ideas here, not people. Okay? You know, now, a, a lesser, a lesser person than me would point out that Mary seriously needs to do something with her hair, and her eyes look a little crooked, and she's very homely, and just kind of based on the contours of what I'm seeing from the shoulder shine, I'm willing to bet she's fairly fat. But see, I'm not going to talk about how ugly she is and how she's probably, you know, compensating for the fact that she's never had a boyfriend in her life. Well, all right. Well, well, no, wait. If a guy gets... Randy, if a guy gets really, really drunk and slobbers on you on a bar, slobbers on you in the bar, does that count as him being a boyfriend? No. All right. So then she's probably never had a boyfriend. Anyway! No! Thank you. <laughs> Randy is telling me to stop and get on with it. <clears throat> Alright, anyway, here at Standing the Obvious, we do not make fun of how people look. <sighs> and that is a lie. I make fun of people. Anyway, <clears throat> let's look at the assumptions here. One man came in and jokingly told our cook to make more fajitas in Spanish. Well, jokingly is in, in parentheses. So here, she she's making this assumption that she understands the rationale for why... The, she interpreted this as some jokingly... The interaction. How does she know these things? Our cook is Mexican, but he was born in the U.S. and hardly speaks any Spanish. Well, lots of people born in the U.S. speak Spanish. Just because he was born in the U.S. doesn't mean he can't speak Spanish. Obviously, this person who said this speaks Spanish, even though he is one of the, uh, what is it, a dominant white American population. Uh, this may seem like a minor accident, but it... Cr I, Yes. Yes, it does seem like a minor accident. Now, let's think about this. Now, I don't know where she works. Wait, wait, let me let me scan this real quick. Does it happen to say anything about... Probably not. Because most people who aren't stupid don't reveal where they work in a newspaper column. Okay, it does not say... But this restaurant apparently has fajitas. Now, there's a reasonable chance, reasonable, that it could be a Mexican restaurant. Now, having worked in a Mexican restaurant, personally, see, 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 Mary, you're not the only human being on earth who has personal experience. You're not the only human being on earth who has actually interacted with other humans. You're not the only person on earth who's ever had a fucking job. In fact, the fact that you even have a job and the fact that you're a Democrat is pretty amazing. See, I too have worked in a restaurant. I worked in a Mexican restaurant. Many of the people who worked in our kitchen were Mexican. As far as I can remember, every single one of them spoke Spanish. Some of them did not speak English. Now, if I was actually smart enough to speak two languages. I, I have a hard time with English, okay, so I sure as hell don't speak Spanish. But let's say I was capable of learning a second language. And let's say that second language was Spanish. And let's say that I went into a Mexican restaurant, and let's say that I saw an individual who was obviously a member of the kitchen staff. I might, and that and that person appeared to be Mexican in his his what what's the word I'm looking for? I was, I didn't want to say racial in in his in his uh, genetic background. 
I might very well, based on my personal experiences, make the assumption that that person was capable of speaking Spanish. And I might speak to him in Spanish. It would have nothing to do with racism. It would have to do with the fact that my personal experience tells me that most Mexican people who work in Mexican restaurants can speak Spanish. This is not this is not, you know, the white dominant people trying to take over the world and degrade you. Need I point out that us evil white people still control most of the assets? And any time we wanted to kill all the rest of you, we could do it if we actually wanted to. Even though you all outnumber us, you seem to have not... You know, the minorities do outnumber us. Everything that counts as a minority, if you take all the women, all the Mexicans, basically if you take anybody who's not a white man who's on welfare, all non-white men on welfare, I mean, we're outnumbered. So anytime you guys want to take us out, you can do it. Except, of course, that the economy would completely shut down because there would be nobody left to do any work. Oh, did I say that out loud? <sighs> okay. Honey, it was a minor fucking incident. You need to do something with your hair, get some makeup, and find yourself a man. <clears throat> Idiots. They are out there. I read Reason Magazine. And I was going through an issue. This is actually an old issue because I am way, way behind on my magazines. Because some of us have been busy contributing to the economy by working. <clears throat> it's a concept that some of you politically active people on both sides ought to try out sometime. Who the hell are these people that have time to protest? I know I've... I know I've Randy's holding up the sign. She has a number of pre-made signs in there that she holds up to me. She's holding up the we've talked about this before sign. Yes, I know. People who uh, do all this campaigning and all this protesting and stuff, where do these people find the money to find the time to do this? You know, normal people have to work in order to pay their bills. All right, anyway, I am way behind on my. I'm, I'm reading my Reason magazine and I read the Brick, brat, brick Bats section. I'm trying to articulate, even though I have a slightly. Stuffed up nose. Sorry about that, folks. Hang on one moment. Mm. A nice drink of ginseng tea. <clears throat> All right. I'm reading brick back. Brick bats. And these are these are hilarious. I mean, this was just they're always good, but this was one after another of just shocking shit, which to me is classic examples of why so many of you out there should be euthanized. Let's check these out. You, you, you guys are going to love this. All right. <clears throat> Roosevelt Sims was experiencing diabetic shock, shock, but an Amtrak crew thought he was drunk. They put him off the train in the middle of a national forest in Arizona, two miles from the nearest road. He was found several days later, dehydrated and disoriented, about two miles from where the train left him. Amtrak officials say the workers were just following the company's policy. So first of all, Amtrak crew members, federal employees, I might add, the very same people that many of you out there want to have want to give these people these these people right here these are the people you want to give control of the healthcare system to people who can't tell the difference between a person having diabetic shock and a drunk person you're going to, need to give them control of healthcare anyway this is the Amtrak's policy if somebody is on their train drunk and I'm pretty sure they serve alcohol on Amtrak trains. Although I could be wrong. I've never been on an Amtrak train. Maybe they don't. They have dining cars, right? Do they have booze? I don't know. Maybe they don't. Maybe they don't. But if you are on an Amtrak train and you are drunk, the federal government's policy is to stop the train and put you off in the middle of a forest? Wow some fucking compassion. I can't wait till these people get control of health care. If you go into the emergency room and you're drunk, they're not going to take care of you. Y you think I'm joking? Why not? What's to stop them? Think about it. 
They'll put you off of a train in the middle of a forest because you're drunk. What do you think these people are going to do when you come in the emergency room and you're intoxicated and they control health care? Or for that matter, if you're on drugs. You know, you go to the emergency room nowadays, that's the first thing they ask you, are you on any illegal drugs? I mean, I went to the emergency room, they, are you on any illegal drugs? Do I fucking look like I'm on illegal drugs, asshole? But, what, I mean, seriously, when the federal government, when you fuckheads out there elect Obama, and he nationalizes the health care system, Somebody's going to go in there, well, you were smoking marijuana, weren't you? Well, we can't, we can't take care of you. Here, before we, before we give you medical care, you need to urinate in this jar, and we're going to test you for drugs and alcohol. And if you test positive for either, we are not going to treat you. We're going to throw you off the train in the middle of the forest. This is a brilliant idea. Let's give the federal government control of health care. This, this is great. <clears throat> David Birch can't get the grass to grow at his new home in White Cloud, Michigan. Michigan, there's your first indication something's wrong. He planted some grass seeds, and when they didn't grow, a judge jailed him for violating city ordinances requiring a green yard. Birch spent one weekend in jail, and the judge threatened him with another. In White Cloud, Michigan, you can go to jail for not having grass in your yard. Wow. <clears throat> okay. Daniel Horn was on his way home from a night out with friends in Wales. Wales would be over in England, United Kingdom, that is, across the pond. Daniel Horn was on his way home from a night out with friends in Wales when their car broke down. They decided to walk to the nearest town for help, but someone thought they were dumping the car and called the police. The police cruiser... Now remember, this is England. This is, the police don't have guns, and they have socialized medicine, and oh, everything's wonderful over there. The police cruiser, responding to the call, jumped the curb, knocked Horn down, and crushed his foot beneath one of the wheels. After finding out the group had committed no crime, the police allowed Horn to be driven to a local hospital. Then a cop gave Horn, Horn an 80-pound fine for denting the police car. Reminds me of an incident probably about 10 years ago or so over in Greeley where a police officer was stopped at a light and decided to make a right-hand turn and in the process of making the right-hand turn ran over a bicyclist. And you know what he did? He gave the bicyclist a ticket for not walking his bicycle across the street. It's got to be great to be a cop, to be able to punish other people for your mistakes. <clears throat> they might not have the Taliban licked, but Afghanistan's rulers already have set their eyes on another target, smokers. The regime has banned smoking in schools, hospitals, and government offices. And officials say they plan to expand the ban to restaurants and hotels. That looks like they're following in the footsteps of America. It's nice to know that we're not just spreading democracy. We're also spreading intolerance and stupidity. After Francisco Linares built a home in Rolling Hills Estates, California... He asked the city to repair a nearby fence. City officials told him it was on his property and was therefore his responsibility. So he fixed it. Officials then changed their minds and said the fence was indeed on city property. They also declared that he had built a retaining wall higher than permitted, among other code violations. He now faces potential jail time. Yes, but at least... At least... I'm making an assumption, but at least his lawn is green. Otherwise, they'd be taking him in for that also. Rehivith Masonia, and I could very well be mutilating this woman's name. I have no clue how to really say that, but that's how I'm saying it. A Malaysian woman was born to Muslim converts, but was raised by a Hindu grandmother 
and married a Hindu man. So she decided to change her religious registration from Muslim to Hindu. When she went to court to do this, the authorities seized her and took her to an Islamic rehabilitation center where she was held for six months. The rehabilitation consisted of forcing her to say Muslim, pro- Muslim prayers, wear a headscarf, and eat beef. Ah, yes, the Muslims, they're so civilized. And finally, last but definitely not least, police in Pasadena, California, have charged 14 strippers with excessive nudity. Now, if you're a stripper, can you be excessively nude? I mean, seriously, when, if I've got a stripper around, there's no such thing as excessive nudity when I'm checking out a stripper, okay? In fact, if I'm getting anything less than excessive nudity, I'm going to be I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Mm. Another drink of ginseng tea. <clears throat> yes. Houston Chronicle, Pasadena. Joe, Joe, not Jim. Joe Horn saw two suspected burglars breaking into a neighbor's house. He did what any good individual should do. He got a shotgun and he shot them and he killed them. Now, of course, this is causing outrage because, of course, the two burglars were black and Joe is white. And this is a major problem, especially for civil rights activist Quantal X. Quantal. There's no T in there. Quantal. I am Quantal X. I'm trying to capitalize on Malcolm X's popularity by making my last name X. Quantal X is upset about this. So Horn, 61-year-old Horn, called the police after hearing glass breaking in a next-door neighbor's house. Horn reported seeing two men going into and coming out of the home. Despite a police dispatcher telling Horn to remain inside, he ventured outside with a shotgun and killed the two men. Horn can be heard on the recorded 911 call telling the dispatcher he intended to confront and kill them. And of course... There, the, as I said, the lines were divided. Horn's neighbors said Quandle was off the mark in suggesting the shootings were race-related. We're prejudiced, neighbor, George Johnson said. We're prejudiced against thieves. Johnson and fellow neighbor Michael Howell said they do not find fault with Horn's actions. Quote, I don't know him, Howell said. Quote, but I'd like to give him a medal. I hope they don't press any charges at all. I actually, I don't know how this turned out. This happened a while ago. And, of course, Quanall says, Mr. Horn did the right thing by calling 911, but Mr. Horn had no moral right, no legal right, to confront these suspects after being told nine times by the dispatcher not to do so. Um, I'm not sure what makes Quanall a moral right and legal right authority. To sit here and say the Horn had no moral right to do this? That's kind of a stretch there, Quanall X. For the record, the Cynical Libertarian Society is in favor of private citizens killing criminals whenever... Now, they just... When I say killing criminals, I don't mean stupid things. For example, apparently in Michigan it is a criminal offense to not have a green lawn. The Cynical Libertarian Society and the Great One himself do not... do not endorse killing other people for not having green lawns. Okay? Cynical Libertarian Society and the Great One himself endorse killing people for certain crimes. The endorsements are, or include, there could be more, but the endorsements include murder, rape, arson and robbery. If a person is committing one of those four crimes, the Great One himself says, you have every moral right in the world to put a bullet in the motherfucker's head. 
every right whatsoever. There's no excuses. There's nothing about, well, my mommy was an alcoholic and my daddy butt fucked me every second Tuesday if ever, you know, when the Broncos lost Monday night football night for whatever. There's no excuses for those things. None. If you are murdering people, and by the way, people are saying, well, if you kill a criminal, is that murder? No, 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 no. Murder is killing somebody without a good reason. Okay? That is the cynical libertarian society of murder. If you're killing somebody for a good reason, such as self-defense or to defend another human being, and those are really, honestly, about the only good reasons for killing people, if, you are, if you're killing somebody just because you fucking felt like it, that's murder. Bad. If you're raping somebody, bad. And by rape, I mean actual real rape, not like... You know, I, the way I get raped by my boss every fucking week. Not that kind of rape. You know, not rape like uh, date rape where, you know, the guy took me out and he spent $40 getting me drunk and then he tried to kiss me and now I feel violated. Not that kind of rape. I'm talking about real rape where the dick is going in the pussy by force. Or the ass. Or any other orifice by force. Okay, that's like real rape. I suppose I would... My, I might toss on the list to kidnapping... I have to think about I have to think about that one. I mean, kidnapping, if you catch somebody kidnapping another person, I mean, they definitely can get a good thrashing. Not sure if I endorse killing them for that, but it, it kind of depends on the situation. Okay, but definitely murder, definitely rape. Arson, if you're burning something down, you there's a potential there to kill people. And it's like, dude, that's, that's wrong. You can kill people for arson. And not having a green lawn. If you don't have a green... I mean, no, 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 wait, no, no. Oh my God, there's people out there everywhere now killing their neighbors because of me. Oh, the burden. <clears throat> Theft, you know. And we're not talking about a stick of bubble gum either. Somebody's breaking into your neighbor's house and stealing things. You have a moral right to shoot them, trust me. Now this, I wonder if I should know. I'm, you know, this is in a class by itself. There's nothing I love better than weird art. You know, we had the Piss Christ, where was it Saranoff or it was Saranoff. Andrei Saranov, Piss Christ, you know, where he took the little plastic crucifix and he dropped it in a jar and then he peed in it and he said it was art. You know, which I, I agree with his opinion of Christianity, that's fine, but it's not art. Anybody can pee in a jar. And then we had Karen Finley, who smeared her naked body with chocolate and then invited the audience to come up and look inside her vagina with that little tool that the... the Randy, what's the what do you call the vagina doctors? Yes, gynecologist. I don't know what the tool is called. The the little tool that gynecologists use to look into the vagina. She has the audience come up and look at her vagina with that. This was years ago. Half of you out there probably don't remember this. But anyhow, <clears throat> great art. This falls into that category. Hertford, Connecticut. <sighs> A Yale... I, I have to just read this because there's no way I can sum this up. A Yale University art student's claim that she induced repeated abortions on herself and used the blood for her senior project is false, school officials said, after her account was published in the student newspaper. Eliza Schwartz described the project in a story Thursday in the Yale Daily News. She said she artificially inseminated herself as often as possible. That's in quotation marks. As often as possible while taking herbal drugs to induce miscarriages. <laughs> oh my god. Hold on, sorry. I'll, I need to drink. There's more. There's more. The account swept across blogs and media outlets before Yale found it all to be a hoax. That was Shavart's idea of an elaborate performance art. 
Quote, the entire project is an art piece, a creative fiction designed to draw attention to the ambiguity surrounding form and function of a woman's body, said Yale spokesperson Helene Kleinsky. There's ambiguity surrounding the form and function of a woman's body? What's, what's ambiguous? If I see a woman's body, I can recognize it as either a woman's body or not a woman's body. That is not ambiguous. As for the function of a woman's body, that's not very ambiguous. I mean, we know more or less how women's bodies function. They function the same as men. You have cellular activity, you have respiration, you have metabolism, you have digestion. You have, what, what the fuck is ambiguous? I guess you have to be a liberal or a feminazi or something. I don't know. But in a column in Friday's student newspaper, Shavart said the project was real. She described her, quote, repeated self-induced miscarriages, unquote, although she allows that she never knew if she was pregnant. How can you have a miscarriage if you're not pregnant? Doesn't the definition of miscarriage include... That... College education. She's wait. Was it? Did say she's a senior. She's a senior. She's had at least four years of college, and twelve years of public education, and she doesn't know you can't have a miscarriage if you're not pregnant. Quote the most poignant aspect of this representation, the part most meaningful in terms of its political agenda, is the impossibility of accurately identifying the resulting blood. Unquote, she said. Shavards told the newspaper she planned to display a work that consisted of a cube with a blood and petroleum jelly mixture on which she would project video footage of herself experiencing miscarriages in her bathroom tub. When confronted by Yale officials, including two deans, Schwartz acknowledged that she was never pregnant and did not induce abortions. So, she wasn't pregnant, it was a stunt, but then she was pregnant and she did induce abortions, but then she really wasn't pregnant and she didn't. What's... This is... Yale... This is what college does to people. You know, if you have an opinion on abortion, that's great. But what I don't even know I don't even know what to do with this. She's probably a poli sci major. I can guarantee you she votes Democrat. That is that is a fucking guaranteed certainty on that one. Okay. <clears throat> I just had Randy do something that we never do here at Stating the Obvious. She actually paused the recording because I had to blow my nose. And while I do, of course, sometimes cough in the microphone, there was no way I was going to subject you people to listening to me blow my nose. There are some... that That's theirs. There's another crime for which people should be shot. Blowing your nose in the microphone. Heinous. Absolutely heinous. <clears throat> Yes, Jesus, God. Uh, Nick Hemingway is a, or was, he's not here anymore, he is a senior mechanical engineer, major, CSU, in the Collegian. Excuse me. He was he was one of the token conservatives for the newspaper. Wrote some interesting columns some time. Anyhow, he writes his a final column. Uh, column. Column. I can't talk. He writes his final column. And, of course, he goes off on the Jesus trip. You see, because nearly 2,000 years ago, God sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to earth to die on the cross. He did this to pay the price for all of our sins, even though we didn't deserve it. Now, first of all, Nick, let me tell you something. Providing there was a God, and providing he did send his son to die for our sins, let me tell you something, buddy, I do fucking deserve it. I, and I've always said it, and I'm going to say it again. I don't understand why conservatives, the 
Christian conservatives types. I don't understand why they can't get along with liberals. Because both of them are exactly the same. Both of them are completely helpless. So you're saying, oh, I didn't deserve to have Jesus die for my sins. Well, that's because you're a fucking loser, buddy. Many people think that being a Christian is living by a big list of do's and don'ts, but it's not. Really. Um, are you sure about that? The only thing God wants from us is our hearts. Aw. For John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Well, you know what? Skippy316 says, You're a motherfucking idiot. Nick continues, We all sin, starting with me. No, 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 son. I do not sin. Because in order to sin, you have to believe in your pallid, weak, little, stupid God. You know, if God is so powerful, <clears throat> and if Jesus was all that, why did he get, why did he get captured and killed and stuck on a fucking tree to die? I mean, I'd be more impressed if Jesus would have got away. I mean, seriously, or he rose from the dead. Well, if he wasn't stupid, he wouldn't have been dead. He wouldn't have had to rise, would he? Hey, somebody comes up to him, hey, Jesus, the Romans are coming to kill you. I mean, any normal person would say, hey, guys, let's get the fuck out of town. But no, Jesus just sat there like a dumbass. I am not impressed. God only asks that we believe in Him and that we join Him in eternity. Isn't that an amazing deal? We get to hang out in heaven with the Creator of the universe forever, and all we have to do is accept His free gift. Wow! Isn't that wonderful? All you have to do is vote Democrat, and you'll get welfare for the rest of your life. And then all you have to do is just give God your heart and you can live in heaven for all of eternity. You don't have to do anything. It's just, it's just all, it just comes for free. And what if they have free health care up in, up, in, up in Jesus land, heaven, whatever the fuck you call it? Because we're going to have it down here. <sighs> wow. How are we on time? No, we're doing we're doing okay. I don't think I do not think I'm gonna get through this pile. It's okay though. Back to abortion. Now there's <coughs> excuse me. See that's the kind of that's the kind of coughing I'll do. What's that stack? Okay, what's this? Yep, okay. That okay. <coughs> Back to abortion. Hang on one moment. Okay. I do actually stop the recording and blow the nose again. It was truly, truly disgusting. Alright, abortion. Uh, there's a there's a move going on by certain oh yeah Jesus people isn't God, the, I I love the way this segues the Jesus people the ones that you're going to get all to, get to spend all this wonderful time in heaven with are trying to put the kibosh on abortion because that's what they do let's see who do 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 Colorado for equal rights has got a is, it, 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 it put a yes has gotten the go ahead to collect signatures to place a constitutional amendment on the November 2008 ballot asking Coloradoans to decide if a fertilized egg is a person. This other article now this, this is the liter, this is the actual wording. Uh, voters will be asked whether the Constitution should, quote, include any human being from the moment of fertilization as person in those provisions of the Colorado Constitution relating to inalienable rights, equality of justice, and due process of law. And I think, I, in, in a way, this, this illustrates the fallacy of these stupid liberals, because notice, 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 If you don't notice it, I'm going to pound it home. Notice how the sperm lovers are calling themselves Colorado for equal rights. Now see, this is brilliant. Because so many dumbass people out there have been conditioned by the liberal media 
and by you know people pushing white guilt and all this other shit people have been have been indoctrinated to respond to any to certain words like diversity and equal rights and equality and all this other stuff a lot of people out there are going to see this Colorado for equal rights and they're probably remember now People, people are dumb. Some of you, many years ago, voted for Buchanan because you couldn't figure out how to, on the ballot, how to tell the difference between Al Gore and Patrick Buchanan. A lot of stupid people are going to vote for this because they're going to see the name of the thing as Colorado for Equal Rights and they're going to think it's about racism. And as much as I despise the Jesus freaks, you got to admit, that's pretty slick. That's, that's pretty smart. Steal the opponent's title. Yeah, I mean, just like liberals stole the word liberal, liberal doesn't actually... I mean, the Democrats are not liberals. The Democratic Party is composed of socialists and communists. They are not liberals in the actual sense of the word liberal. Libertarians are the liberals, but we can't use the word liberal anymore because the Democrats have taken it and fucked it up, and now everybody has a negative connotation for the word liberal. So it's been, it's been removed from our domain. We can't claim that anymore. So the Jesus freaks who think that every sperm is sacred have co-opted the phrase equal rights in their endeavor to get people to believe that a fertilized egg is a human being. <clears throat> the concept that we're going to elect judges who will change everything has failed, said Brian Rohrbau, or something like that, past president of the Colorado Right to Life. Quote, the logical thing is to start with personhood. It's the only legitimate tactic that does not involve a compromise. Now, interestingly enough, one thing I learned is that in the history, because there's sort of this assumption, right, that, okay, so typically it's the Christian types who think that a fertilized egg is a human being. And they get this belief from their religious beliefs. And they get these religious beliefs from... I think some people think, including some of them, think it comes from the Bible, but it's not... I'm pretty sure there's no place in the Bible that says a fertilized egg is a human being. So, as my understanding is this comes from the Pope, who many years ago said this. Now, interestingly enough, if you go back in history, you will find there was a time when the Vatican quite clearly did not consider life to begin at conception. And apparently, somewhere along the line, there was a little mix-up where somebody was drawing pictures of fetuses and drew a picture of a fertilized egg and made it look like a little human being, and then some uneducated religious fuck at the Vatican saw that and decided that fertilized eggs were human beings, and then that announcement was made by the Pope. Now, I know those details are a little sketchy, but the important point here is, I wonder, this is what I, just, what I want to get at, is that it's not like since day one when Christianity came into existence, the Christians thought, oh look, a fertilized egg is a person. This is a relatively new development in the history of Christianity. And you would think, you would think, as the world progresses and we get smarter in science and technology, you would think people would get smarter, not stupider. Apparently, my thinking in that course is wrong. <clears throat> Abortion rights advocates tried to block the Colorado ballot initiative by claiming the language would confuse voters. Now, but the state Supreme Court ruled 7-0 to zero that the initiative was acceptable as written. Now, here's, here's another interesting point. So, the abortion rights advocates are trying to block this by saying the language would confuse voters. First of all, like I said, they, they made this bed. They're the ones who have conditioned people to respond to words like equal rights, phrases like equal rights. But, here's another point I'd like to make. Is these people are saying that the average voter, were, well, that some voters would be confused by this language and would therefore vote the way they don't intend. Now, you know something? If you're not smart enough to read this and decipher what's really going on, should you even be allowed to vote? Of course, those of you who are familiar 
with the tenets of the cynical libertarian society are aware that the answer to that question is no. And I will submit, here's the entire, here, we could eliminate all of this if we simply did not allow people who are stupid to vote. But no, here in this country, all you have to do is metabolize oxygen into carbon dioxide for 18 years, and we are ready to let you make important political decisions that will affect every other person in the United States, and even people not in the United States, such as we are going to allow people who are too dumb to figure out what this amendment means. Those same people are going to be allowed to determine who the next president of the United States will be. Now, that's not a very good idea, folks. And you look around at the country around you and you wonder why it's fucked up. You wonder, how did George Bush get elected twice? Well, there's two answers to that. Number one, the Democrats are incompetent and stupid. I mean, it's, it's, been, it's been four years. I still can't believe that Kerry actually lost to George Bush. I mean, come on. I could have run a I could I could have run a campaign for a dead woodchuck against George Bush and beat him. And and we have another election. Let me tell you some let me tell you some folks. If anybody if anybody can get McCain elected this year, it's the Democrats. If anybody can fuck this up and get that stupid, senile, old son of a bitch elected president of the United States, it is going to be the Democratic Party of the United States of America. There is no election they can't lose. There is nothing they can't fuck up. I have the faith. I have true faith that McCain has an excellent chance of being president because the Democrats are going to fuck it up just like they fucked up four years ago. What else is in here that is that I need to? And then yeah, so they kind of make fun of her. Okay, yeah, and so the the the, the person who came up with this concept of Colorado for equal rights is Christy Burton, twenty year old col a twenty year old student. Again, here we go. She's twenty years old. What the fuck does she even know about anything? Why? She's metabolized oxygen into carbon dioxide for 20 years. Now all of a sudden she's putting ballot initiatives out there which would affect every person in the state of Colorado. There's a problem here, folks. And it's the problem of allowing intelligent people, unintelligent people, access to levels of power they should not be allowed to have. That's the real problem behind all of this. So, a 20-year-old student enrolled at the una, I like the way they stick this in. Enrolled at the unaccredited Oak Brook College of Law and Government Policy, an online law school that caters to religious homeschoolers. This is, of course, a ding at the fact that she's uneducated. But of course, <clears throat> a large number of Democratic voters are uneducated. After all, when you're on welfare, you don't have a lot of money to go to college. According to the school's promotional material, students reject, quote, the faith of evolution and the religion of secular humanism and should pursue godly wisdom by memorizing and meditating upon God's word, the Bible, and seek to use this wisdom in resolving conflicts, developing strategies, and implementing policy. Yes, let's implement policy. Now remember, Nick, Nick, in the column I read earlier, said that religion was not about a list of things you're supposed to do and not do. Yet here, the, what is it, the, the Oak Brook College, it's a college of law and government policy, is telling us that you should meditate on the Bible, memorize the Bible, and use the wisdom in the Bible to resolve conflicts, develop strategies, and implement policy. Sounds like a list of do's and don'ts to me. So anyhow, we'll, it'll be interesting to see <clears throat> how this turns out. And this article does actually bring up a good point, which I need to get to. Thank you, Randy. She's pointing to the clock. <clears throat> if, if, when the sperm cell hits the egg cell, if it becomes a human being at that point, will people, women specifically, because men won't have this problem, if you're a man and you have a fertilized zygote in your body, you have problems, but not this problem. If you're a woman and a 
you have a fertilized zygote in your body, but it does not, does not implant in the vaginal wall as they typically, well, I don't know if I should typically, I, I know the statistics are, as they frequently do not. And it is then just expelled as part of the vaginal discharge. And I'm not saying vaginal discharge to be funny. Okay, fuckheads, chill. I mean, this happens all the time. Fertilized zygotes do not imp- always implant in the vaginal wall. They're discharged from the woman's body. So if the fertilized zygote is a human being, and if that happens, is that woman guilty of murder? And how are you going to know she's guilty of murder? Is there going to be like some sort of mandatory testing to determine if this has happened? Because remember, we're we're going first of all these you know we're going to turn a fertilized zygote into a human being. Then we're going to give the federal government control of health care. Do we want? Do you stupid people want to go down this road? Because when the federal government is controlled by people like McCain, who think that expelling a fertilized zygote from your body as part of natural vaginal discharge because it did not implant in the wall of the uterus, when those people are running the health care system and they find out you expelled that zygote from your body, are they going to push, press charges on you for murder? If you're a fe- <clears throat> excuse me, if you're a feminazi, if you're an abortion rights wacko, you need to think about this. You need to fucking think about this. You need to keep control of the healthcare system and control of the abortion as far away from the control of the federal government as you fucking can. Because if the federal government is taken over by the religious wackos, guess what, ladies? Guess what is going to fucking go bye-bye? It's going to be your right to go in there and vacuum the little thing out with the vacuum cleaner and not have to pay for it. You know, I'm, I am as much, believe me, believe me, I am just as much in favor of, I, I know the music's going, I am just as much in favor of abortion being legal as all of you abortions right wackos, but you better think about your techniques and your methodology. You better keep health care out of the hands of the federal government or you're going to regret it. <laughs>